Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me. I'm sorry it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a week since my last video and I was on it like butter on toast <laughs> for ages. I had about three videos going out each week and then it got hot. <laughs> so we had Father's Day last weekend which I think the whole world has Father's Day. I might be wrong. And it was busy and we spent time together as a family and we went on some really awesome walks and saw um, the forest. I've got some photos on the screen now. And we had a really lovely time out as a family and that was really special. So it meant that I lost time with work because given the virus, it means my children are home all the time which means that I don't get time in the day to work so I can only use Saturday and Sunday to work. Um, we also have church on a Sunday uh, which we do via YouTube and so that kind of eats into the time a bit as well so with Father's Day um, and church it meant that I didn't get much done last weekend but that's just life that's how it goes. Um, then this week I planned to work in the evenings except that it was above 30 degrees for three days in a row. One day it hit 33 or 34. <laughs> I spent half the day in the kids paddling pool. It was too hot. Um, so forgive me it's been a little while. Um, I had some of you ask me about doing um, how you would take my idea which was from my album which you can see here um, where I did what's called a waterfall effect and so some people had asked if I would show you how to put it on a card and how we can do it on a card. So I've done some samples up for you. I've got all these ones here. I've kind of got like the basics and then kind of stepped it up a couple times to share with you how you can kind of make it a bit more detailed if you want. Um, I have done coloring on all of them apart from one which I use some watercolors on and I'm going to share with you why I did that and how I did that. Um, and I'm using my Arteza products. Now, don't run away <laughs> if you want to be involved in a giveaway. I have listened to you. You have all told me so many times you are so upset that you cannot get Arteza products in your country. Arteza only ships to the UK and to the States. Um, it might actually be a bit of Europe as well. I can't quite remember. I think someone corrected me on that once. So I do apologize, but I know that most countries do not get Arteza. Um, these are one of my latest purchases. Well, I didn't purchase, sorry. I should say that these are one of the latest things that Arteza sent me. And they are just coloring pencils. These are amazing. And I talked to Arteza. I sent them a message to my contact and said, look, would you mind letting me know when these are back in stock? I would like to purchase them because I would like to do a giveaway for my subscribers. And they were super kind and super generous and said, no, 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 no. We will happily send them to you. If you're going to post them out to people, we will send them to you. So Arteza sent me a whole box of these coloring pencils. And I'm going to share with you what I made today. But they have gifted you some of these pencils. So what I said was that if they sent me the big box, I would divide it into five and I will post five bundles anywhere in the world. Now, towards the end of the video, I will share with you what they look like, how I've packaged them up, and you will have the opportunity to win one of those packages. No matter where you are in the world, I will pay the postage from my pocket and I will send them to you because these are the best pencil crayons I've ever used in my life, or I should say colored pencils. <laughs> um, I grew up calling them pencil crayons, but apparently that's just not the word you use because nobody has a clue what I'm talking about. So colored pencils. <laughs> um, and I will share those colored pencils with you because I just think they're the best ones I've ever used. They are so pigmented, they color so smoothly, I love them. So that is what's coming up towards the end of the video. If you'd like to be in my giveaway, make sure you watch to the end and follow my little instructions. But I'm going to get started. I'm going to share with you how to make a waterfall card and then I'm going to share with you the cards that I've already made and there'll be some pictures as well if you want to see them in more detail. So let's get started. So first of all, you're going to need some kind of decorative paper. This card is brilliant for, again, using up your decorative paper and using a big chunk of it and allowing it to be a focal point on your card. 
Um, you'll need some matching cardstock that kind of coordinates with your paper. So I've got this paper pad here, which is called Sea Glass. This is from my collections, which is um, from Michael's. And I bought this in Canada when I was last at home. This is a 6 by 6.5 inch paper pad. It's got some lovely, beautiful designs in it. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've used, as you can see, quite a few of them already. And I thought today I would use this really cute one with the um, limes on it. Now this one has got a bit of glitter in it and it's really pretty. This is going to be our background bit of paper. I then picked this Wisteria Wonder cardstock from Stampin' Up, which I'm going to use because it matches the little leafy flower things in there. And you should only need one sheet of A4, um, but I've got two just in case. Then also you'll need some white cardstock. Mine is already pre-cut, but I'll share the measurements with you in a minute. Then you need whatever you're gonna put on these panels. So you could use more decorative paper, you could use um, stamps, you can use stickers, whatever you want, but it has to be flat. Don't use embellishments, things that are 3D. You won't get the right effect, it won't go very well. So pick something that's gonna be flat. I've got these white card pieces that I've pre-cut because I plan to stamp on them. Um, I have got this stamp set here, which comes with coordinating dies, and this stamp set is from uh, Pink Fresh Studios. Now, you'll notice <laughs> I am missing, so I'm just going to tilt them on an angle so you can see them a bit better. If you notice, <laughs> I'm missing <laughs> the bit of cardstock there. So, as we all know, if we are a follower of Sasha, <laughs> that Sasha likes to have wine on the weekends <laughs> because that's the time when I relax with my husband and we chill out and so I have a glass of wine on Saturday and Friday sometimes Sunday today's Sunday <laughs> um, and Sasha's really good at oopsies so yesterday I was making these cards and um, yeah, I batted my wine across my desk. <laughs> so we had an emergency cleanup and if you watched one of my last videos, you saw the um, enormous avalanche that happened onto my desk of all the crap that fell off. Um, so yes, I spilt wine all over my desk and managed to not get any of my current projects. I managed to get my book. <laughs> It's a little purple and a little bit covered. Um, it went under my desk a bit, but there's nothing important under there. And it went all over the packaging for this stamp set. <laughs> so I no longer have the packaging <laughs> uh, because it got soaked in wine. So it kind of went in the bin. So uh, that's why this has not got the packaging, but this is a stamp set from Pink Fresh Studios. And um, it is called Fleur two I believe um, so that's the stamp set that I'm using today in my project and then I have this stamp set here which is from Alina crafts on Aliexpress and this stamp set I've been meaning to use forever because when it came out I thought this is genius this is exactly what I need in life because every so often I do an interactive card and this is perfect I'll try and not get the light reflecting on there and try and get it so you can see it. I'll try and put a picture on as well. But it has got push down, turn around, turn here, press here, pull here, push down, look inside. Um, and it's got all the arrows as well. Really versatile, small, cheap stamp set. Really awesome for this kind of card. So I have got that um, stamp set as well from Alina Crafts on AliExpress that I'm going to use. And then if you're going to do some colouring, you need some form of colouring um, utensils. <laughs> so I've got my Arteza pencils and I did this last week and my daughter was so excited she did her own little mini version. I printed this off their website so I've got my little plastic. If you've watched some of my videos you'll have seen that I've made some stencils out of this plastic recently. Um, but I used it as a cover and I used my um, cinch binding tool and made myself a little book. And I just went online and I printed off um, the picture that they had online and that's the inside of the tin there. And then I did a little swatch 
list. So in my tin, this is how I've organized it all. My lid keeps falling off, so I need to use my pliers and fix it. But on the inside, Arteza's got a list of all the colors. And they kind of put them in the rainbow order for you. So I have organized all my pencils in this rainbow order. They came in a different order. I don't know how to describe the order because I have no idea what it was. Um, and I've put them all in this order, so I know my pencils are always in the right order. Um, when I did my book, I also did my book in the same order. And all I did was I scribbled on it and went from darker to lighter. And then I did a little strip of black as well. So to make this, I just used a series of score lines. So if you have these pencils and you want to know my score lines and how I did my book, pop me a message in the comments um, and I can send you the details as to that. But basically, all I did was I put down all the colors and did a color swatch so that when I've got my paper that I want to match it with, it just makes it a lot easier. The other thing I did was I labeled all my trays with a number. So I've got number one on the top one. And so I can easily find the color because I know which tray it is in. And then I know roughly where it will be in the tray according to how many are on my paper. So that's kind of how I did my pencils. It's worked a really big treat for me because it's meant that I can go through this really quickly, really easily and find the pencil crayons that I want, sorry, the coloured pencils that I want that will match my paper and my project. And then I can see as well how they look on black if I choose to do them on black. I might again do this with a bit of craft card stock so I can see what they'll look like on craft card because I know that it can be different as well. There are also metallic ones in this section which are quite fun. So that's how I've done my little book to keep track of my colors. So what I do is I take my paper <clears throat> and I just have a look through my book at what colors kind of go with it or what colors are the same and or very similar. So I kind of want to find like an olive -y green color or maybe this teal color, find the purple. Um, I'm just going to have a look through there and pull out the ones that go well. Now it's important to make sure you put all your pencil crayons so you don't knock them over and put the lid on. So these pencil crayons, the trays are a bit difficult to get in and out um, in terms of having to pinch them, but they do store them really nice. And once the lid is on, they don't move. So that is really, really good. So once this is on, like so, I can tip them and you can hear there's no movement of the pencil crayons anywhere. They don't tip, they don't move at all. So once the lid is on, you're free to knock them <laughs> and they should be all right as long as the lid doesn't pop off. So I went ahead and I picked these pencil crowns and as you can see, they look pretty much almost nothing like the colors on here, apart from the olive green, which is why it's important to do swatches of your colors because you can actually see the real color of what it looks like on white paper. So this is really helpful to be able to see those kind of colors. I am also going to add in the unicorn purple which is a metallic one um, because it will go quite well with sort of the glittery look on it as well. So the measurements that you need for your card is you're going to start with a standard card size base so whether you're in the states or another country that uses um, inches or whether you're in the UK and you use centimeters start with whatever base you've got as a normal standard card size base. So in the UK, we have a 10 and a half by 14.8 card base. Okay, you're going to need your card stock to be 10 by 14.3 centimeters to get a half a centimeter around smaller and then go half a centimeter smaller with your designer paper. So you're gonna have nine and a half by 13.8 centimeters for your card base. Now, if you're in the States, sorry, I shouldn't generalize and say the States. I know most countries, I think, 
do their cards in inches. So you're going to have your five and a half by four and a quarter inch card. And then you're going to do the same and you're going to cut your background colored cardstock a quarter of an inch shorter and then your designer paper a quarter of an inch shorter. And that's going to be your base. So we'll do whatever you would do as a normal standard card base and create that. Then these are the measurements for your waterfall card, um, the waterfall bit that's going to go on the front of your card. So you're going to need your color card, which is gonna be that one. I need to cut four squares. I'm sorry, I should say that one there. So you need four of those and four of those. So you need four colored card squares at six by six centimeters. It is easiest if you do this in centimeters um, as that's just how I've kind of done it. It works out easier because you're gonna mark and score your one bit of cardstock in centimeters. So it makes sense to do your squares in centimeters as well. So I apologize if that's not your normal metric system. Um, but this is what worked for me for this card. I played around with quite a few different sizes and this is what worked best. So I've got four colored cardstock squares at six by six centimeters, four at five and a half by five and a half in white. Then you're going to do your strip that's going to be the waterfall effect and you're going to cut it 20.5 centimeters by six centimeters. So make sure that's in centimeters, not inches. And then we're going to score it six, seven, eight, and nine centimeters. This is what I will walk you through. So don't stress. I'll put all these measurements down in the description box as well. So make sure you check that out. But if you're a visual person like me, I thought this might help. Then you're gonna have a binding strip which is gonna hold it together, which I did in inches, so I apologize because sometimes I flutter between the both. But I've done one inch by six and a, or one inch by six inches. And then a writing strip if you choose. This is optional, you don't have to have this, and I'll share with you why I've done it, which is 5.5 centimeters by two centimeters. Those are all your measurements, and we're going to do it together, so don't stress because it looks a bit overwhelming. But I wanted to have those there for you in case you wanted them. Okay, so we're going to start with our paper trimmer and we're going to cut our cardstock background. So for me, I am going to do it at 14.3 by 10 and a half. By 10, sorry. Then that should give me a nice little panel that will go on the front of my card like so. Now to keep it simple, so I've got the same measurements in my head, I'm then going to cut the same, and I'm going to cut nine and a half by 13.8, and then I've got that panel, which will sit on the top. So Now, I do apologize, because I think you can get the whole card out of one sheet, but again, I did the wrong piece first, because we do need a really long strip of this. So this one, we are going to need to cut at 20.5 centimeters, which works out to roughly eight inches if you're doing it in that, but I would just stick with my measurements if you want to have a go for the first time. And then we're going to do it by six centimeters wide because what we're doing is we're doing our piece of paper the same width as what our squares are gonna be. Now my blade is going a bit funny, so I'm getting this jaggedy edge. So if you are doing something like this, doing this card, and you want to do your own measurements, then you want your squares and this strip to be the same width. You can have it shorter. It is just a little bit trickier to line up. I find it doesn't look as smooth as it does when you have the same size. It all come together and it all makes sense in a second. So we're going to score this. Um, every centimeter starting at six because our squares are six by six. So we're going to score it at six, then we're going to move it along to seven, then eight, and then nine. Okay, and I do apologize because I know a lot of you don't work within centimeters, um, which is why I'm trying to explain it as I go as to why I've chosen the, the specific measurements I've chosen. 
Then as I said before, I've got my white ones already cut. These are cut to five and a half by five and a half centimeters. I've got more than I need because I inevitably make mistakes. So I've got plenty. Then we're gonna take our cardstock and we're gonna cut it to six by six centimeter squares. So then we've got our four colored squares. Now this is where hopefully it'll make more sense is this width is then the same size width as our panel here, which makes our waterfall card. Then this is where I wanted to confuse everyone because now we're going to switch to inches. So we want a one inch strip by six inches to wrap around. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Like so. <laughs> so just to confuse you, I've thrown inches in there as well. So we've got those and then you can see this is all my leftovers so I th I'm fairly certain I could easily get all of this out of one piece of card. I just chose to cut the wrong bit first. So I think you only need one bit of card. I've just done that backwards. Um, then as I've said before we've got the optional writing strip. So this is the bit that we are going to put in white because it, it's not so much writing as it is stamping. So grab a bit of scrap card stock that you've got lying around. I have a drawer in my desk where I just keep just white um, cardstock strips, white and vanilla, so I can just grab them and trim them up. So it's just this little square here. Now to get started we can just um, stick our layers together and just adhere them all together and put them on the card. So there's our card base. So we can tuck that to the side. The next thing we're going to work on is our squares. So I think it's always worth having a bit of scrap paper to put down underneath or a bit of grid paper, something um, that you can either wipe off or toss when you're done. Um, I've just got a bit of copier paper today. Um, this is what I just put in my printer. And I've just got it set. When I stamp down on it, I am going to be stamping probably slightly off of my cardstock and this will catch any ink so it doesn't ruin my work surface. So as you can see, you can see some of the ones that I've already used. Um, I'm going to go with this stamp set because it's kind of floral. I've got a bit of floral in here. And so I'm just going to kind of pick some of the ones that sort of tie in with my paper. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention that is useful to have is some kind of sentiment. It's really helpful to have the message you're sending. So happy birthday or hope you're feeling better soon. Something along those lines. So for today, I've got this Stampin' Up! stamp set. Um, the Stampin' Up! stamp which says here's to celebrating you um, which could either be like a promotion at work or a birthday it can mean a lot of things so I quite like a sentiment like this so I've got my stamps mounted on my blocks these are all Stampin' Up! blocks I really like them because they've got a really nice groove um, they're just from left over from my Stampin' Up! demonstrator days so I've got those blocks there I know it's kind of hard to see my bit of cardstock because it's white on white at the moment um, so I'm very sorry for that. I'm going to use Gina K Designs Amalgam Black Ink today. Um, I picked this up when I was in Canada <laughs> from a shop that sold a lot of American products. I really like this ink pad. Um, it just works really really nicely. I either use this one here or I will use the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. They're both really good ink pads. This one just stays wetter for longer. So I often use my Gina K one, but I will link this one down below um, if you're interested. So I'm going to start with my sentiment one. And I'm just gonna ink it up and make sure it's the right way around. I'm gonna aim for the center and stamp it down. Now, that's all right, it's not looking too bad. Often I go a bit wonky with sentiments. I haven't got the sticker on the back of it because I find Stampin' Up! stamps um, are quite rubbish for sticking properly, so I don't tend to put the sticker on the back. Now this is where I'm gonna come in with some foliage and I am going to stamp on the foliage as well to add a bit more interest. So I'm going to line it up on there I might get a little bit more. The stamp set's great because it's got absolutely tons. Then I'm going to come in with my block and just kind of pick them up. Then I'm going to ink them all up 
And sometimes if it's new stamps, I like to kind of just stamp off and make sure that they're stamping all right. And then I've got that one there. So now that we've got our four panels, we can start coloring them in. Now I'm a very, very, very basic colorer. I have no skills whatsoever when it comes to coloring. So I'm going to speed up my coloring process. I'm sure you probably have better ways of coloring, but I'm literally just going to use the pencil crowns that I pulled out and just do some bog standard basic coloring because that's all I really know how to do. And I love these pencil crowns because they're very smooth and very pigmented and it's so easy to color with. So you can have fun and listen along while I color. Now once you've got your panels done, you've got a couple different options. You can either just adhere them straight onto your panels or you could help them blend in a little bit more and you could then ink the edges to kind of help it blend into your cardstock. So my cardstock that I used was actually per um, Perfect Plum from Stampin' Up. And I've got the matching ink pad. You don't have to have matching. As you can see, I used my pencil crayons to find matching colors. Just use what you've got in your stash. You could always ink it with black around the edges. It just kind of helps it to either blend in or pop out a bit more. Um, I've got these makeup sponges that I get from the dollar store um, or the pound shop in this country. Um, I've also got a bunch of sponge that I got used um, from packaging that I like to use for my edges. You could use finger daubers. Um, just find what you've got around the house. Uh, you can use a sponge and cut it up. Um, anything that is sponge-like is obviously going to work quite well. So I just dab the ink onto my edge and then I kind of just do a really gentle flicky motion to apply the color to my edges. And it does look dark, but once it absorbs into the cardstock, it will dry lighter and because I've used cardstock um, that matches, it will blend in well. This is again where if you don't have um, cardstock and ink that are from the same company that match, it's worth um, color swatching all of your ink pads so that you can see what they look like when they're dried so that you can then find one that will go along with the cardstock that you've got in your stash. You most certainly do not need to buy um, all matching and all coordinating because I have so many things of cardstock from other companies that I can find matches with with most of my ink pads. So it is worth bearing in mind that if you do a color swatch it's easier to work out what's going to match. So next we're going to adhere them all to our squares. So because they're only half a centimeter smaller they're just going to fit nicely onto our squares like so. So for this process I'm going to use liquid glue my favorite glue at the moment is the Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. I got the Gina K adhesive as well, which I bought and paid $10 for in Canada because Jennifer McGuire uses it all the time and I thought, oh my goodness, I have to try this glue. The Gina K glue is significantly smaller than this glue. And I swear to you, I've tried them both. They're the exact same. <laughs> so I'm just gonna stick that down it adheres really quickly um, 
and sticks really well. Sadly, in the UK, Tonic is almost always sold out of these. I know that Craft Stash also sell them. I'll link them down below if I can find one that's in stock. So just as a comparison, this is the Gina K Connect glue. You get 0.5 ounces in it. It lasted me hardly any time. It cost me $9.20 Canadian. And in this one, you get two ounces or 60 mils. So you get about four times the amount that you would get in one of these. And I swear to you, they're the exact same glue. <laughs> I cannot see any difference in these two glues. They both adhere the exact same. They both have the same amount of connecting drying time. This is not worth your money. <laughs> it is really good glue, but it is ridiculously expensive for what it is. So that's just my little side rant. Um, if you're going to buy a glue and you want the same as Gina K, I would go with this Nouveau Deluxe glue. It isn't cheap. This is about five pounds in the UK, but it is worth it and it lasts a long time. I really like it. If I don't use this glue, then I usually use the slightly cheaper version which is this their craft tacky glue. I really like these two liquid glues. I have ordered, or I will be ordering again, <laughs> I've done so much shopping. <laughs> um, there's a new Sizzix glue that I really want to try. Um, and there's another new glue I saw in Craft Stash that I also would like to try and compare with these two. Um, this is one pound at Every Craft's a pound, by the way, and about a pound 25 or a pound 50 at most other shops. And Tonic is um, an American company, so there is a lot um, you can find this in the States quite easily. So you should have all four panels glued down now. What we're going to do next is take our strip and we're going to fold it over on that first crease line. If you have a bone folder, grab that. If not, use the back of a knife. Um, anything sort of firm, you could use um, the back of your scissors if you need to. Just kind of give that a good crease so it lies a bit more flat. We're going to fold all the creases the same direction, okay? So when we fold them down, make sure that that's lining up with those edges and then crease it. And then we're gonna fold again. So we're going back on itself again and we're just keeping them all going in the same direction. So you'll see what I mean in a minute. And that last fold line and again, make sure that those line up and give that a crease. So what you'll have is something that can do that, okay? You want it to be all going in the same direction. So they're all folding. You're not doing zigzag or accordion. You're folding them all the same direction, right? So we've then got a piece like this. And this is where we're gonna take our little binding strip. Now this one here, we haven't scored it and we don't really need to. This needs to line up this line here needs to line up with that bottom edge there. So make sure you're holding that down flat so you know where you're going. You're just gonna fold over one side and hope <laughs> that you get it a bit straight. And then you're going to fold over the other side. So if you line up that edge so that it's straight along behind it, it makes your folding over go a bit smoother. Now, <laughs> I'm not so good at this. I kind of keep messing up a bit there. So we're gonna line up the line so it goes along straight with that line. Fold it over. And then we're gonna fold that one over as well. So then you've got that kind of little fold. Now what we want to do is glue this to this top piece only. So do not get any glue anywhere else but this top piece. Don't get it on the side and don't get it underneath. So I like this liquid glue because it goes on quick, it adheres quick, dries quick. You could use tape if you want, um, red tape, any kind of strong tape. Um, I like using this liquid glue because I know it's strong and works well. Then you're going to do the other side. You're going to cover the whole side because what we're going to do is cover the other side so it's kind of like a little flap. Now don't worry if your pieces are smaller than this if you haven't got this much of a length as long as those two ends touch that bit and adhere to that bit. So I'm just going to stick that down. Now we don't want any glue under there. We don't want glue on the sides because it needs to be able to slide. 
So you need to be able to pull it and slide it. Okay? So stick it down. Now some of the tutorials I saw online, well all of them, um, they stuck their panels on first. I found it much easier to stick this piece on before I did anything else. So that's why I've done that. Then we're going to go and we're going to stick a bit of glue on here. What we need to think about as well and pay attention to is the order we want our cards to go in. So I want my sentiment to be the last thing they see. So the first one you stick down is going to be the last one. And all you're doing is sticking a little bit of glue along that top edge. So if you're going to use tape, then use very, very thin. I've got this stuff from Alina's craft store. It's so thin you can see my hand through it. It's just really, really fine. I think it's a quarter of an inch possibly, maybe an eighth of an inch. Really thin tape. You just want just near that top edge. Then we're gonna go ahead and stick a bit more glue just under that next score line. And we're gonna stick our next flower down. And again, this is why I was saying if you have your panel piece be the same width as your squares, it's really easy to line up. If it's narrower, you've got to be really paying attention to the other squares that you've already placed down to make sure you're getting them centralized. Next, you can put some more glue down on that layer. Again, we're just going near that top score line. We're not putting glue all the way on that rectangle. So you want to make sure that you're right near that score line, not taking up that whole rectangle because it won't flow as easily. It's very important, which is why I either use a very thin tape or a liquid glue that's quite strong. So then we're going to take that top panel and put it on the top. And again, it's much easier to line up when your panel is the same width, um, sorry, when your base is the same width as your little square panels. So you want to give it a minute to dry before you go tugging on it to check that it works. Okay, so now that we've got that finished and all glued, we can then stamp our little panel. Now we've cut this so that it can fit just at the bottom down here. Now I just quickly trimmed mine. For some reason I cut mine to two and a half and it needs to be at two centimeters. And that strip's going to go here. And I'll share with you in a minute why I ended it up deciding this was a better idea than just directly stamping. So I've got my stamp ready to go which says pull down and I'm going to stamp it towards the top so I've got space to add some kind of way of pulling down. So I'm going to take my Gina K ink, I'm going to ink it up to just stamp to the top which says pull down. Then I can go and adhere that onto my little panel. So then I've got that. So now make sure you've got your card facing the right direction depending on how your card opens. And we are going to make our little opening. So I've got um, a couple ideas. You can either use a stapler, you could hole punch, um, you could attach thread, you could attach a button, a brad. Um, there's so many different options that you could use to make a little pulling system on the bottom. One of the good things to do is to check that your um, system works that you've not got glue somewhere where it shouldn't be so you're going to hold those two side bits there which are your back panel you're going to hold those and just pull and you can see if your panel works or not and it should work nice and smooth um, as long as you've not got glue anywhere but on that front bit like we've said so what I'm going to do for simplicity's sake is I'm going to staple on a little bit of seam binding ribbon and I've just cut it a bit longer than I need. Now one of the tricks I like to do is use a glue dot. So to make it easier and to stick quicker, if you take a glue dot, these ones are from Alina Craft on AliExpress, I just stick a little glue dot behind it and pull it off. So you can see there's a glue dot on the back of there. Then I'm going to stick that, line it up and stick that on because I found it really difficult to staple and hold my ribbon in place. So I have a stapler that I love to use which is my small little stapler and I've lost the staples for it. So all I've got is my bog standard normal stapler which is much bigger. <laughs> so I put that glue dot on there because that kind of helps hold it for me and then I can line up my stapler 
and get a nice even staple on the front. So the glue dot is not meant to hold it, it's just meant to allow me to attach. So next I'm going to apply glue and I'm going to stick it on the front of my card. Now we're only again going to stick glue on this panel. Do not get glue anywhere else on the back or your card will not slide. So again you can use really strong tape. I'm going to use my strong liquid glue. I'm going to put it close to the edge but not too close that if it moves and smudges it's going to go on to my other bit of card because we need that bit to move. So I've got my glue on there. I'm going to aim for the center of the card and about a quarter of an inch from the top. You can put it wherever you want, you can put it in the middle if you want. And then you're just going to push down on that bit where the glue is. We know that bit of the glue is somewhere down here, you can see it from the side. And we're just going to push it down and hold it for a minute to let it adhere. Okay, so once that's stuck down, then we can trim this ribbon if it's a bit long and is sticking off our edge a little bit, we can just trim it down a bit. And then we've got a really cute, really sweet slider card and you can grab the ribbon and you can pull it. And we have got our waterfall. How gorgeous is that? So I'm gonna start with these three here and they're all the exact same, but I've stepped it up a little bit between each one. So I'm gonna share with you how I did that. So for starters, there's this one which I colored and did exactly just as we did and I put my flowers on, colored them in and added my sentiment on the last one. And then I stapled on my little ribbon, you can see my small staple there. Inside I took another panel, just a plain panel that is just slightly smaller than my card base and I inked up the edges to give it the look of sort of having a layer and then I stamped that flower on the inside. Then to step it up, I stamped my background panels. I've got this really old stamp from Stampin' Up! I think it was something like French sayings or something like that. It's just a big background stamp with a really beautiful script. Um, and I just stamped that onto my the backs of my white panels to give it a bit more character. So here's a close up so you can see. And that's got that writing in the back. And then I also, inked up around the edge of my pull here and then I added some twine to my ribbon. So again you just pull the bottom and we've got our little waterfall card. Now the third way you can step it up is I have got that stamping in the background again. I've also added some twine to the bottom but if you can see I also added some shimmer pen. This is my DIY Wink of Stella or Glimmer pen. I will link that tutorial below on how you can make your own. And again, I've inked up around the edge down there, but all my flowers, if I try and pull it while holding it close, have all got a bit of shimmer to them and a bit of shine. So you can kind of step it up that one more step. So there's that one there. Then I've got this one here, which I did with watercoloring. So I took some watercolor um, paint from Arteza and I just did a watercolor wash with some metallic silver. And then I added some paint to the tops of my flowers and just left that bottom one blank. That was one of my first ones I did. And now when I attach my little bow at the bottom, <laughs> Um, this ribbon's from AliExpress as well. I ripped <laughs> my panel. So I took my little hole punch, um, which is from We Are Memory Keepers. This one here, it just does um, a reinforcement circle. And so I just punched that out of my matching paper scraps um, and then fixed my problem <laughs> and stuck it on there. I did one on the back as well, so it's double strong. Um, but that's how I made that one. And again, on the inside, I've done the little edges and stamped a flower in it. Again, I will link all the supplies down below that I have used so that if there's anything that you want to find, hopefully you'll be able to find it. Now on this card, I use the Arteza coloring paper. So this came um, from Arteza. I asked them if I could have one. It's quite a bit smaller than I expected, but I also <laughs> didn't read the description. I'm quite good at not doing that. It's 6.4 by 6.4 inches. You get 72 sheets. They're all different 
and they all have page numbers. Now the one thing, I haven't worked out why, and I've not asked Arteza, I've not um, googled it or looked it up yet, um, but they have all of their colouring sheets in grey. So it's not black, it's grey, and I'm sure it has something to do with when you're colouring that you can add the dark colours if you want the dark colours, would be my guess. So it is all in grey, it is all very light. It is really beautiful, some really beautiful images in this paper pack, uh, or this colouring book. It comes with this little strap, so you can put it on. It also comes with a very, very thick chipboard edge, so that you can colour on it directly. And all I did was I took out three pieces that I really liked, and I coloured them. And then I So these are all colouring sheets, they're not actually stamped images, so if you haven't got any stamps, to colour in, then you can just use colouring sheets. So that is quite cool. For this one, I found colours in my Arteza colouring box um, of colouring pencils that kind of matched my background paper again. And I coloured the backgrounds with the lightest colour, which I tried to pick one closest to that grey. And I coloured in the background. I inked the edges in black to kind of make them stand out. And I just literally coloured the colouring sheets. And I'm not so good at colouring sheets, by the way. Um, and then this one, I picked one stamped on it, um, but picked one that had a very vague pattern and coloured it all the same, that kind of matched my pinky colour. Then I, what I did for the bottom bit here is I stapled it on, and then I glued on with my mixed media glue, um, just an embellishment that I got from AliExpress, um, and stuck some ribbon on there. And then again, on the inside, I did the same. My last one was this princess paper. I wanted to have a girly card. This is the one where I made mine with my panel strip slightly narrower than the squares and it was a bit more difficult to line those squares up and get them quite even. It also felt like it wasn't as stable as when I used the width, the same width as my squares because obviously you're only gluing that little strip. For this one I used this AliExpress embellishment I have a whole box, it's for um, tying ribbon on, and I just used my multimedia um, glue again from Ranger and glued that on and glued on that thread, um, not thread, the ribbon onto it. Um, and then I have this stamp set, which I have had in my stash for ages, it's a really cute little princess set, and I just used those images to go with my princess paper, pick some colours that went along with it. And then this time, I don't know if you can see, I've got a gold wink of Stella, and so I did some embellishing with my gold wink of Stella, and then my DIY wink of Stella on various bits of her dress um, and other bits. So I added lots of glitter and glimmer. So all you have to do is pull down, and I've got the horse. I added some glitter to his bridle, and then I added the gold. Wink of Stella to the wheels and to the top. And then I completely covered the castle in my DIY Wink of Stella, which was loads of fun. And it says, have a magical day. So that one I really thought was quite fun. And I thought a child would really enjoy getting a card like that. And that is my last waterfall card. There we go, I stuck a little princess on the inside and put some gold on her as well. Right, let's get to the giveaway. So, as I said before, Arteza had kindly sent this massive box. It retails for £60 UK. Um, and so I have divided it up into five bundles for you. So there are going to be five winners. I will ship them anywhere in the world. I tried my best to get some of every colour in each bundle. I kind of counted out all the greens and then put equal amounts of greens in. I did the same with all the other colours. Um, what I've also tossed in, as well, are some permanent markers. So Arteza sell these markers, which are basically like Sharpies, and you get a pack of 60, okay? So I ordered them because my Sharpies are all dried out, and I needed new Sharpies, and they were really expensive. And I found these on Arteza. And I got them on offer for about £11 for 60 Sharpie equivalents. I've been using them all week. Uh, about two weeks now I've been using them for. And they are fantastic. So I have stuck in 
two into each bag. So I've given you a blue and a black as well to go along with your pack. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to stick in five sheets of coloring paper from one of these books. So you will get five sheets from a book, 24 pencil crayons with two permanent markers as well. So this is my little giveaway. I will post these all out at my own expense. I don't mind. I do earn a bit of money from um, from YouTube at the moment. And I am grateful that you joined me. And to be honest, I really just want to share some of this Arteza stuff with you. These are the best coloring pencils I've ever seen. So I've got five packs. I need five winners. So in order to enter, Arteza have asked if you could please pop over to their YouTube channel. I've got the link in the description box, so make sure you go down there and check it out. In the description box is the link to their video. Please go over there and drop a comment. You do not have to to enter my giveaway, but it would be very kind to show a little bit of support to Arteza. Have a watch of their very short video on colouring. I believe it's on colouring. Pop a comment in their video as well make sure to drop a comment in my video to say you would like to enter and that is all you need to do you do not need to do anything else just tell me you would like to enter this giveaway I will use a random number generator I will assign all the comments that have said they want to participate a number and then I will draw them and you will have the chance to win 24 pencil crayons two permanent markers and five sheets of coloring so the competition is going to run from today until a week from today and the dates are on your screen. You can see them now, they're also in the description box. And you must watch for my video. I will do a video announcing who the winners are. Please make sure to watch that video so that you know if you've won or not. I will leave my email in the description box. You will pop me an email with your address and I will send these out to you free of charge at my expense as a thank you for joining me and watching my channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love you to subscribe, but that is not a compulsory thing for you to enter this competition. Thank you so much for joining me today. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the giveaway video. Bye.